Okay, uh, we're here with Art Pimentel, council or uh, can mayor of Woodland, and uh, candidate for board of supervisors in uh, what, uh, Yellow County. Um, and we have a few questions for Art. Um, please give us a short description of your qualifications for this office. Perfect. Well. Um, I was uh, just a little bit about my background and the reason I'm, the reasons that I'm qualified. I was born and raised in the city of Woodland. Um, I went to the public schools in uh, in Woodland. I graduated from Woodland High School back in 1997, and went on to um, Sacramento State. Graduated from Sacramento State back in 2002 with a degree in political science. I went back to school uh, and got my master's degree in educational leadership in 2010. I've been on the Wooden City Council for the last eight years and got elected mayor in 2008. And I've just, uh, the, the, the experience that I have garnered in being a uh, member of the Woodland City Council and representing uh, diverse issues on the council as, uh, as well as directly, issues that directly connect with uh, county government have prepared me to be a member of the Board of Supervisors. Okay. All right. Uh, budget cuts have eroded many of the services that people in the community have come to rely on, leaving them increasingly, increasing number of people vulnerable. How will you work to ensure that the safety net of safe social programs is not decimated by budget cuts? Well, I really think that uh, it's going to come down to balancing, um, have, doing a balancing act with some of the social services that we do offer. Uh, actually, I shouldn't say some, all of the so social services that we offer. Um, some of them are a safety net to the uh, community, and a lot of people rely, especially um, low-income individuals and our seniors rely on um, s services from the county and, and state government. We have done that uh, very, I think, effectively in the city of Woodland. I, I want to point to that. Uh, we offer, obviously, the, the city of Woodland doesn't offer social services like the county does, but the, um, the important issue is that we need to make sure that we have uh, services, that, that, that we protect those services that people would otherwise not be able to, to have if it wasn't for either city or, or county government. Just a perfect example, um, the, one of the things that we have done in Woodland is, is trying to balance and not just eliminate services that have really supported uh, the community such as uh, public li the, our public library system in Woodland and uh, the parks and recreation, our senior center, uh, a lot of youth programs that uh, for, in my opinion really assist uh, a lot of our youth in keeping them busy and, and uh, keep, keeping them active and, and something that uh, is productive. And uh, time and time again every year, especially during these difficult times, uh, staff has always proposed eliminating some of those important pro projects and uh, or programs and we have refused as a council to just focus on just one priority like uh, even though public safety has been a priority for our council we haven't just focused on that and eliminated everything else to make sure that we keep uh, public safety we've made sure that all departments within the city have uh, taken a hit that have been reduced as uh, as much as it possibly can without necessarily impacting any of the of the, the services while maintaining services and programs like the public library like youth programs like senior programs like our sports park open uh, like actually having um, uh, basically you know all the all these d other different programs that we have uh, that I can probably just go down the line and name of monies that we've provided for the Opera House activities in Woodland uh, our boxing program and, and, and those types of things. So related, directly related to uh, the, the county budget and how uh, we need to make sure as, as I'm learning a lot more about the county budget, I have a copy of it in my house. I've been studying it for the last several months. Uh, I've been looking at some of the budget uh, workshops that they've had. We just need to make sure that we uh, protect a lot of the services, like I said, the, the social services that our community relies on. So. So are the governor's proposed realignment of public safety, prisons, social services, mental health, drug and alcohol services from the state over to local governments and counties along with the revenues, how will this realignment impact Yolo County and what issues would you identify as potential challenges? Well, I think there's a significant impact to Yolo County. I mean, it, it's a significant impact to all of the uh, communities in the state. 
Um, and one of the reasons is because we have the, the realignment allowed now is going to uh, basically put um, a lot of felons within our communities and within our, the, the system of the county of Yolo. And the resources that have been allocated and uh, I think uh, for this year, for example, it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit less than $2 million in supposedly the programs or the allocation is supposed to grow as more and more uh, individuals are released early. And my biggest concern with that is that we have the probation and, and enforcement side, which is obviously critical and important. Um, what I have seen the Board of Supervisors do up until now is not provide enough uh, social service programs to help the individuals who are being released early to try to do some sort of job training, uh, try to provide them with some sort of assistance so that they can be successful, so that they can integrate themselves into the community. I haven't seen any of that discussion. And so, uh, or it's been discussed, but I haven't seen that direction be officially provided by the Board of Supervisors. And we really need to have that perspective and, and that a significant portion of those funds go to that particular, uh, th th those particular uh, programs, uh, and we have a, uh, we we do have a system in place. I think we have a structure in place where we should be working with our uh, uh, many of our nonprofit organizations, specifically like the Wayfair Center, who provides quite a bit of uh, support uh, to help individuals with uh, drug rehabilitation and substance abuse. Uh, uh, actually uh, is, uh, trains people in, in different uh, ways to help them find a job and resume building and, uh, and different other types of uh, activities within the actual uh, structure of the organization. And I think as we promote that and we do that more, uh, we'll be more successful in helping people out instead of just, in, you know, instead of just focusing on law enforcement alone. Um, I think, uh, again, I, I, I turn back to something that we're doing in the city of Woodland with our gang issue that we're having, that we cannot arrest our way through this problem. We need to provide activities. We need to work with parents. We need to work with some of our low-income communities. We need to work with the Latino community uh, because, unfortunately, in Woodland, you have, um, you know, it's an issue that 90% uh, of the identified gang members in Woodland are, are Latino. That's a problem. We need, to, we need to look at ways of how we can better educate parents and work with them uh, and so that their children do not fall into the, the, the issue of, of gang activity. So I know I'm jumping around from one issue to another, but one of the That's things it. that we've done with, the, with, with, the, um, with one of our gang programs that we're trying to implement, uh, the Youth Gang Reduction Initiative Program in the city of Woodland, is actually work with law enforcement, work, work with faith, the faith-based community, work with other different nonprofit organizations, uh, work with our school systems to make sure that um, uh, that we are all communicating and we're uh, leveraging our resources as much as we possibly can, and not just specifically focusing on law enforcement. Because again, like I said earlier, we cannot arrest our way through the, the issue. So that's the same model that we need to have with this realignment. We need to all be connected. We need to all talk to each other. We need to communicate and find out ways of, yeah, we, 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 there, there, this is an issue. Um, individual felons are being released early. Uh, they could uh, potentially become a problem, but we address it by trying to f work with these individuals and try to integrate them uh, in a positive way into our community. And there are going to be those individuals that we are going to obviously um, uh, continue to have to work with unfortunately arrest and obviously that's going to be a, a law enforcement uh, side but it needs to be balanced as we work through this realignment uh, the, 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 the new realignment responsibilities that we have in the county.